Good morning, good morning. It is Wednesday and it is 10 to 6. 10 to 6 in the morning. This is going to be the last day, so we're going to make the most of every hour. Okay, this is, I didn't show this last night, but this is all the stuff that I was de-stashing from all those little wooden drawers. So I didn't keep all the flowers. I'm letting some go. Seed beads, metal flowers, those packets of flowers, those Melody Ross things. I don't think I'll use them. So I need to be realistic. Okay, so that is going. And then I had one drawer left, which is probably the, yeah, I've probably left the most difficult one to last because I know this is in a real mess. So this should be jewellery wires and cords, but you never know what we might find. We'll see. Right. Um, I think it's mostly got in what it should have. It's just not very well organised. Okay. Okay, escaped, right. So things I want to keep, artistic wires. So they need to stay. Um, that is a very thin wire. But you know what, it's got rusty. Uh, do I want 30 gauge rusty wire? Probably not. This is, see, this is what happens. Uh, okay, well that needs, I don't know what that needs. It needs to not be like that. Let's see. Okay, it still needs looking at. I can tighten it up. It does have a little thing, but... Uh. <sighs> Isn't that one of the most frustrating things ever? Right. I will not be beaten by wire. Well, maybe I will. Come on, little wire. Do what I want you to do. It does not want to tighten up right. You know what? Should I just put it in a bag? Because otherwise I'm going to have to unravel the whole thing. And that could quite easily drive me mad. Yeah, it's still going to want to fall off. I'll put it in a bag. Okay. Um, I won't ever use that cord. I don't like the colour. It's too thick, so that that's gone. Um, what is that? Seven inch stub wire, whatever that might be. I have used that for things though, because it's quite a strong wire. Not necessarily for jewellery making. Then I have most of these things are little tiny bits that have probably been free with kits and things, I won't use them. Oh look, another book ring. What a surprise. I don't use gold book rings, so that can go. That can go. More rusty wire. Um, that's tiger tail wire. That can stay. That's waxed cotton. And so is that. This is, I use wax cotton for um, sewing book bindings. Oh, 
Ready thing on there now. Okay, well, that's probably just going to come undone again. Right, let's at least put it in the bag. I don't know what that is. That says ribbon. I'm not going to use that. More stub wire. They're just little velvet, like gift things. I won't use them. That's been sat there forever. Won't use it. Tiger tail wire. That looks like memory wire. And then, oh, that's. That's the inside of one of these. That looks like invisible thread or something like that. Uh, copper wire that's a complete mess, no. Waxed cotton, more waxed cotton. Rusty. No, it's not rusty. It's tarnished, though, I think. Memory wire. That's... Is it memory? Actually, maybe it's not memory wire. No, it's not. Okay, well, that's a thicker gauge wire. Let's just... Do something with it. Um, these, I really like these, so much so I've used them all up apparently. Wax cotton jewellery cord. Let's wind up what we've got left. Yeah, this is the cord I used with all my dominoes. I think that one might have been off it. There's hardly anything there though. This is one I would definitely repurchase if they still make it. They probably don't. Um, it can stay. I need to go through that still, that can go. More tiger tail wire. I'm sure I have another place where I've got tiger tail wires or oh you know what? I think that is that. Pretty sure. Right. That goes. That stays. Let's get rid of the bits. Still have that bag to go through. Well, that wasn't too bad. Um, I don't know what's in here. Let's take it out. That's fine. Some black stuff. <laughs> I don't need that mess, do I? No. Let's just keep the black. And it's the same kind of stuff. Okay, so we've got those two in there. I'm going to put these in as well. Just so they stay straight. Turn that up and then put the wire 
layers in. these in a, a separate bag. Well that wasn't as difficult as I thought. Maybe I've been through it before because I'm sure it was in more of a mess than that. keep the rusty wire because it's it's good for altered projects and those little ones and I'm not sure these will stay in here but it's just some wire cutters and pliers right that's it done job done so that's all of those units that's trash uh, all the little wooden units sorted out. I think next I need to look at these. These are all my stamps that are not indexed. If I could get rid of these today, that would be... Well, not get rid of them, you know what I mean. Um, put them in my index and give them a place in the room that would be good and I think the other job for today is revisiting this box because this bothers me all these fibres that I've just thrown in here that I know I can't use the lace I'll yeah whether I can use it or not I want to keep the lace but all of these really and I've just shoved them in a drawer. I mean, they're not on the floor. So that's been handy while I've been sorting. But yeah, this needs looking at. So I think they will be my main jobs for today. Plus, I want to I want to get labels on everything again. But I can't do that until I'm 100% certain that everything is staying where I've put it. Okay, right, I'm going to start indexing stamps. That is job number one. And I will get back to you when I've made some more progress. Update time. We have an empty box. That means all of those stamps have now been indexed. And that was a very, very time-consuming job. So... I now have all these index sheets just to prove that I actually did them every single one all stamped out all my primo ones stampendous all of those that is everything that was in that box so that is now empty so it doesn't need to go on the floor Fibres are next, and let me get the this whole box that I was not happy with because I don't want it to be in a whole box. And realistically, I'm never going to use this many. Um, I'm going to try to fit into this box instead, and then it will free up this drawer. So then I can fill this with more rubbish. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I need to free this drawer. But I'm going to. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wind off some of each, a realistic amount of each that I think I'll use. Put them in grip seal bags and put them into here. So I will see you back when it's done. Now I'm happy with the fibres 
Oxanity. Fibres in here. So I've taken out, I know it still looks like a lot, <laughs> but I have taken a lot out. So I've put them in little bags, I've taken a length off and I've tried to put like with like I've left a couple on the things there's like a cream one that I really like and a multi one and a black and that's it all the rest I've just taken a length off so there's three or four different blues in there there's three different purples in that one greens same thing so they fit in there, I can get the lid on and now they can be stored with my other fibres and the stuff that's going, all those, all those and those, let me show you those, that's a lot. I'm really pleased that I didn't just leave those stuck in the drawer to forget about again, that I actually went back to them. And there's probably a few more things that I could go back to as well. I'm thinking maybe some of the shaped chipboards that I might um, have another look at. Um, so yeah, that's a successful morning doing that. Um, it's taken, well, it took quite a long time to do the stamps because a lot of them needed mounting, so I did that at the same time as indexing them. So stamps are sorted, um, the fibres are sorted, that's all going to go. There is a couple more jobs to do. I know the Tim Holtz stamps still need indexing, but I'm not going to do that on camera because I think we've seen enough stamps. Um... And there is a drawer below it that's got my stencils in, which I did organise my stencils and de-stash, but there's also all kinds of templates in there. So that needs doing, and then label everything. See if everything's in the home it needs to be. So yeah, that's, um, that's probably what I'm going to do next. Okay, see you when I'm finished doing the next job. I'm back. I just wanted to give you an update on what I'm doing now. I'm kind of working on some bitty jobs, really. Um, yeah, probably putting off the things that I still need doing. But um, I had some colour swatches of my Art Alchemy paints. So I've just punched those out into little circles. They're currently just on top of the, the right um, colour paint, so... I can put it into my swatch book but here's my swatch book and I've not updated this in a long time so it's got the lovely yellowed labels from the Dymo machine which I don't like and I was just thinking can I cut those labels off and I can't really um, without it making a really awkward page size um, I don't know what I was thinking when I cut these pages at this size either because it would make more sense if they were um, a quarter of a piece of A4 and they're not um, anyway so I'm kind of thinking of updating this and I've just tested I took out this was the Viva Ferro page or one of them um, I've peeled off the steel one because that's one of the colours that's okay still um, but I'm trying to put my punch through here to see if I could punch the little colour swatches out and I wasn't sure it'd work through the card and another piece of card and then the ferro paint but it worked fine so I think what I might do is cut a load of new pages and take out the pages that aren't needed punch through the ones that are still needed and redo my book but that's going to take it's going to take some time um see Americana paints I've only got I think that's the first page of them um, yeah I've only got a few of those in here I've got those and those and I have 
a ridiculous amount of Americana paints. Well, I have a ridiculous amount of everything, right? But um, those in particular. So none of them are in here. Um, the embossing powders need updating because I don't have some of those anymore. My glimmer mist is in here. See, a lot of stuff can stay. Like sticky finger sprays, glimmer mist, starburst, dilutions. They can all stay as they are. I just need to punch them out. But um, I don't know why I want to do this. I think just because the labels are annoying me. And I want to update it. But I can't put the same labels on because I de-stashed that label maker. Which I don't want to use anyway because the labels are big and wide. That tape is too wide. I mean, do I even need to do it with labels? I don't know. I just want my little book to be nice, I guess. <laughs> this is what I do when I should be doing more important things. But anyway, so I'm kind of, yeah, thinking about doing that. I've got my colour swatches for there, which have been stood there while I decide what I'm going to do with this. Um... I've probably got other things that need swatching too. Then also, my folders, see if I can turn you around here. My stamp index folders, I put some um, paper onto the side. Just because they all had labels on that left torn bits of paper on. So I've put labels on, not labels patterns paper on the side of that that is seven dot studio paper that i just cut up um and then bring you back down to desk level i have there some labels ready to go with um what's in those folders so just the different stamp companies on each so I want to get that done as well and then I want to label all the all these drawers. I've taken some labels off, some of the old labels, some are still on. Um, and that those two drawers there that I didn't pull out that have fabric in, I really should pull them out. I think I said, was it day two I was working on that? I don't know, I forget, there's been that many days. But they're the only two drawers in the room that I didn't pull out. So maybe I should pull them out and see what's in them. Because I have fabric in my other room and it could potentially move. None of these have... Um, well, I say none of them. Some of them have. But the top ones, none of them have got labels on. Because I pulled them off as I was de-stashing empty drawer. Don't know what that's going to be used for. But I've got an empty drawer. So yeah, I want to label everything. Those again, I've pulled some off, left some um and then there's just well i've got the tim holtz stamps to go through um yeah that's um that's going to be a big job i'll do it off camera but i might let you see the stamps if you're interested i've got silly amounts um but i'm probably not going to de-stash them there's just i think there's like two sets that i'm considering de-stashing but they all fit into those drawers down there, so there isn't a need to de-stash them. I'm not saving any space space by getting rid of two sets. But that's about it, I think. Stencil drawer, that needs looking at. So the fabric drawers, the stencil drawers, look at the Tim Holtz stamps, label everything up, and maybe update my little booklet. And that's it done. That is everything looked at in this room. There is a whole other mess in the other room but I think I'm going to save that now for maybe summer because I've only got yeah it's it's only a couple of days till I'm back at work and I would like to make something before then plus I have normal stuff to do you know house stuff general living stuff okay well if I get anything else done I will update you well I thought I'd better give you a update on where I'm at I did decide to redo my swatch book because I just wanted it to be neater and there's so many things to take out of it so I cut myself some bigger 
um, sheets of card. This is a quarter size of an A4 sheet, which is, it's not that much bigger than it was, but it is um, it's quite a bit wider, which means I can get more swatches on there as well. So I did the um, Cosmic Shimmer Sparkle Paste because they were never in my swatch book to begin with. So all of those are on that. I used a stencil to put them through to get the samples. This one here is not sparkly at all. It's called Midnight. It's like a black. It's kind of shiny but not sparkly but the rest are all a sparkle finish. And I'm glad I did that because I found a casualty. This colour here which is a gorgeous colour, Vivid Violet, um, has dried up. Which I mean there's, there was hardly any in it anyway, it's like way down at the bottom, but something else that needs to go, so anyway at least I know I've not got it anymore. So I did the Art Alchemy as well, and the Prima paints, I had the swatches for these already done so it was just a question of punching them out, but they're the metallic ones at the top. I don't have all of them. And then there's some of the Opal Magic, which is... Oh yeah, you can see the difference in colour. They're kind of like interference paints, but not really. Because if you put them onto black or dark cardstock, they all kind of just look gold. But you can see the colours there. I think... I've not really played with these. I think probably you need to test them over a few different cardstocks. Maybe, um, like the blue gold, maybe put it over a blue one and see what that does. And the aqua rose, put it over a, a pink one. So I need to play with those, but they are pretty. Um, and on the back of there, I've got the new alchemy sparks. So, so that's those done. Um, and I did take off my golden fluid acrylics. They were the first pages on that one so I'll put them onto here and I, I don't know why I didn't double back them but anyway so I condensed the pages they were on because there was only how many was I putting on there two four six I was only putting eight on there so I've got 16 on these I think two four six eight yeah 16 and I've got all these pages ready to go so that's something I'm probably just going to work on from time to time until I've got everything up to date. I'll probably leave, I might leave the glimmer mists and the spray mists and embossing powders, I might leave them in here because I don't think anything's changed with those, it's just the paints really. So I've got the Americanas, I've got loads that aren't done at all. Stuart Gill, I just need to take a few out, those Viva Ferros. Yeah, they need to go completely. So that much needs to do in plus the Americanas and that can stay as it is. Which is inks and embossing powders. So that's one little job I've been working on. And I like I like doing things like this. It's well it is organised knits and I find it helpful. I refer to my old one all the time for comparing colours and um putting colour combinations together. So it's really useful. Uh, other than that, oh I've taken out one of the fabric drawers so I did say I would go through these because they were the only two drawers that I didn't pull and as soon as I pulled it out I was like oh lace, it's not just fabric then, it's got lace in it too. Um, and there's, see there's another of those bags to alter so that can go with the other bag straight away. And then really I have two two drawers of fabric in here and I have see there's lace. Isn't that pretty? Um I also have fabric in my other room and that can go, I'll never use that. I really need it all in one place. I don't know whether I'll use that. Or that one. I'm not sure. 
so yeah, I want to try and get it all in one place, but I know there's a four drawer unit in the other room. Two of the drawers have fabric and the other two have, I don't know, one of them's got some ribbons in. I think the other one's got art prints in that I used to sell on Etsy. So I just need to, yeah, I need to go through this, see what's in here. These are just little scraps of calico, I think. That's, and you see, things like this should stay in here because cheesecloth I only ever use for mixed media stuff. But I suppose I could condense these two drawers down to one. And these are, well, these are things I bought for mixed media stuff as well. These patterned fabrics, but I think most of the others are in the other room, so maybe these need to go in there. Well, anyway, that is what I'm going to do now. There's more lace. Like a netting. So pretty. This is what I'm going to sort out now. And when I've gone through it all, um, we'll see if I can clear a drawer. That would be good. If I can clear a drawer, great. That's really old. That's uh, I don't know whether you can buy this stuff anymore. It's that snow effect kind of mesh. Anyway... Right, so that is my next job to do. There's not much to do after this. I keep saying that, don't I? But I keep finding things. Um, but there isn't really. Just these, the stencil drawer, and label things, and we're done. So I will see you later. Well, that didn't take too long. This is everything that's going, as in probably straight into the trash, because it's just like little bits most of it and then I found these two pieces that I've obviously dyed for some reason for projects I like this I think I think that um, was done with fabric crayons I don't know I like the colours but anyway I probably won't do anything with it and then I saved some bits that were I don't know whether anyone would want them or not, but I thought they were a bit more decent. So I'll donate them and see if anybody wants them. Um, so yeah, this is this is all going. That's going. And then I've still got the rest of the fabric to think about what I'm doing with, see if it'll go next door. But that's the update for now. Well, this is the second box. It had mostly lace and lace fabric in. So I've taken anything else out, and that's gone next door. These were in here too, those, they're like those um, fabric roses on a trim. But the trim is that wide, I, I can't see that I'll ever use those. Um, and there's that one as well, that's a similar type of thing. So I've left this with lace and there's a bit of tulle at the bottom lace and tulle and these are applique pieces that I got from Wild Orchid Crafts and then there's just sort of the big lengths of lace and then my cheesecloth down the side because I use that in here oh and I'll tell you what else these things came out of a unit and they've been sat needing a home so they can go in here as well that's that big thing of lace that I got off ebay and prima lace trim so they can go in here as well so let all laces in here all other fabric is i bet that doesn't fit no of course not all other fabric is in the other room so so i've saved a drawer at least i've got one empty drawer and one that's more organised. So for two drawers that I wasn't going to go through, that was worth it. Just the stencil drawer next. So I will come back when I've got that out. I think we're on to the final box. Well, I hope we are anyway. This one lives under my desk and it's labelled uh, templates and stencils. And all this stuff that's on top 
is all stuff that I've pulled from other places in the room and there's my stencils below so I need to really go through these top things this was um, who remembers these this is uh, in the days before dyes when we only had these this is our hot off the presses um, a stencil for mini envelopes and I still really like it I ha admittedly I've not used it for a long time but I might um, I might hang on to this because the dies that I have and I, I haven't bought any for a number of years I will say but the dies that I have are the Sizzix ones and they cut but they also cut through the fold lines I don't know whether people remember when those ones that were supposed to crease first came into being and they they weren't that great and then there was that board um, there was like a black board that you were supposed to buy so that they cut and creased and I bought that board and it didn't really do anything so hmm when I go into the other room and look at my dies maybe I need to throw the dies away or not throw them away maybe I don't know what do you do with dies where they don't really function properly probably throw them away rather than give them to somebody else who's going to be disappointed with them anyway I've got several dies that cut rather than crease so I like my template that was that was a long explanation of why I'm keeping it okay so this here was an envelope I picked up that I don't know what's in it it was in the drawer with oh there's my um, meander book I must have shoved it in there as well so you've seen that it's a template for that meander book and the pages which I'll make one of those um, these look like templates for a book well they are oh they're the ones oh hang on there's two different ones there they're the ones I found and put in here covers and that's a different one almost the same <laughs> I'm not sure I need both of those but it's the fact that the holes are all lined up so you can just draw around them if you want to make a book that size I might keep them right so this one here that looks like a cover and these oh these are little pockets that I've made they're not glued down no they're not glued down but they stay together they're all hand cut because I can see pencil marks on them well what's that one that looks like a cover from I don't know I don't really know what my intention was with that um, but it's there if I want it then let's see if there's anything else in here yeah a piece of paper with Absolutely nothing on it. Yep, <laughs> that's recycling. Oh, that's a Tim Holtz sticker, isn't it? See, this is because I pulled them out of that drawer. A piece of black card. I've got no idea what that is. got instructions on it <laughs> but I don't know what it is oh I know what it is I don't need that it's stuck together it's for a squash book that's what that is right I don't need that I think that must have been when I first made them what are these They just look like little chipboard tiles. They're quite thin. Looks like I bought them. Well, they can go chipboard. Airmail stick. Airmail stickers, yeah. Oh, I know what that is. That's for a tree. There should be another part. You fold the paper. 
I don't know what I've drawn all over it. And they sit. No, that's wrong. Obviously, I don't know what way trees go. What <laughs> Christmas tree is what it is. There we go. They go like that. But most Christmas trees don't have doodle hearts and flowers on them. <laughs> I must have been bored. Well, I'm going to keep that, I think. So I remember how to fold the pieces of paper. That, right, that is the packaging for something. That is a... Yeah, I kept that. I've got a password book. It wasn't my idea, it was somebody else's idea. I can't remember whose it was. But um, I really liked, it was a few years ago, I really liked the video that I saw, so I've made myself a little password book for websites, and I use it a lot. So I've made myself a template, and that was what I was sticking in the bind it all, obviously. Uh, right, this is a C6 envelope template. Do I need that? I don't know. I don't think I've ever used it. And these here have never been out of the packaging. <laughs> template for a cracker, I don't think we need that. Template for a screen. Uh, I don't think we need that. Template for a wine bottle, don't need that. These are all down the back of the desk. That's the book. That's the cover for a star book. Another. What's that one for? This is a Fiskars one that's supposed to go with the shape boss. Is it? Shape template. That's it. Remember those things? They were rubbish. <laughs> well, they were rubbish to, for me because I, I couldn't get them to cut nice nicely. Uh, I might cut it by hand and see what it's like. It's a little, it's a little box. Can you see? I might leave it out and make one and see, see whether it's something I would use. Then, yeah, the rest of this needs to stay, I think. So let's have a look. So my stencils we sorted out on whatever day it was. So we know that they're all done. I don't know why I put that in there. It's part of the project. That needs to go. Starbook pages. Oh yeah, and I put all these little projects in here, didn't I? Because they've all got templates. That can go. Yeah. Then... Tim Holtz masks. Actually, the rest of these are in the 12x12 12 12 folder. A printed template for a pillow box. Does everyone else have junk like this sitting around in drawers? Um, I like these tools. These, and I've used them on videos, so you might have seen them before. They're called Islet Friends. That was the first one I got. And this is the se second one I got. The made by Timeless Touches, and there isn't a web address. And whether it's still around, I don't know. But TimelessTouches.net, really handy because it's got the ruler, so you can line up holes for, you know, when you need to punch holes in things, and they need to be evenly spaced. So you just kind of draw around the holes and then punch it. So I really like this. The ruler I find more useful than this. I've never... I don't know whether I've used it for eyelets ever. But, I mean, the principle's the same. You're punching a hole. So it shows you where to put holes. Anyway, they stay because I, I do use those. Then, yeah, that's... 
that's the packaging for the little one then these are all what my Tim Holtz stencils came in and I keep these for the sole purpose of showing the packaging on my videos and I know people find that helpful so I will hang on to those another template for something don't know what what was that for oh I know I know what it was in fact I know where the project is it was this little project that I did for Prima that's what it is for the um, for those I still like that project two years ago when I did that anyway <coughs> that is what that maybe I should write what some of these templates are that might be helpful uh, their masks, they're staying. They might, they might fit into my stencil storage containers. Um, do use this occasionally. I'll hang on to that. Oh look, more envelope templates. These are Judikins ones. Three that all slot together coin envelope I don't know what else is in there coin envelope, square envelope and don't know I'm going to have to make them Let's see what they're like this is something somebody sent me for texture and I'm clearly not using it because it's still packaged up uh, I dread to think how old some of the stuff is in these. Oh, do you remember? I, well, if you've been keeping up and watching all the videos, I said I had a stencil cutter and I'd used it once. There we go. That's my attempts at making my own stencils. <sighs> oh, well. Maybe I should get rid of it. Oh, that's still for that Prima project. It's got measurements on it. So they should stay together. Yeah, they were the little envelopes. Then, oh, oh, I forgot about all these. These were something that um, somebody at work cut for me. Not that. That's another pillow box template that I've downloaded um, I used to be in it doesn't um, well it probably still exists the, the blog is probably still there but it's not a challenge anymore it used to be a gothic arch challenge and you had to create artwork um, in the shape of a gothic arch so these were the little arches that I had cut at work I could just alter those though, couldn't I now? They're made of their MDF and then I had some some out of um, acrylic as well and then there was I had some houses cut I think I've got three I've stamped onto that three different houses too I don't know whether to keep them or not. I don't. I don't use them right now, but I might. Uh, I don't know why I had those cut. Is that? Oh, that's ATC size, I think. I think that's ATC size, and that's four by four, which will. I don't know, I don't know why I needed them like that. I can't remember. 
that's ATC. Oh yeah, they're just the middle pieces and there's another house. I should get rid of them, shouldn't I, really? Squash. <laughs> these, these must be notes for a YouTube video because it's got squash book measurements and then it's got US measurements, well, inches as well. So I must have needed them for a video. That's more templates for Starbucks, I think. Then I've got metal templates which I don't really use these very often anymore and the camera's not going to like them is it? Right that's a daisy one these who are these by? Dreamweaver that one is anyway uh, so that's still in its packaging it's never even been out That's a little plastic one. That's that makes a nice pattern. Butterfly. That's nice too. Daisies. More Tim Holtz. I'd forgotten about those. That flourish is nice. I should keep them together really. A compass. Look at that spider. That's cool. Yeah, I, I kind of know that these are here, and but I never reach for them. But I never reach for them because there's so much rubbish in the drawer that I can never get to them. So it's easier just to pull out a different, you know, a different folder with plastic stencils in. A seasons one. It's really hard to show these. You can't really. Yeah, the trees. That's <laughs> that's it. The trees. There's a spider web to go with the spider. Another unopened stencil. Cherry blossom. Bird cage. That's a nice butterfly. Okay, and they're nice as well. I need to, I need to reach for these. What is that? Hmm. I don't know what that's for. Well, it can go in that case. That's a nice dragonfly. That one I've obviously used. That's nice too. These are these are absolutely gorgeous stencils. It's like <laughs> it's like seeing them for the first time because I've not seen them for so long. Peacock feather. More flowers. I think they're. I think that's called black eyed Susans. I think. So it could be any flower. Another. Oh, this is a Martha Stewart one. I didn't even know I had that. And then. Now these can probably go. These are alphabets from the Crafters Workshop. But I won't use them because... Do you see the way on like the A and the B and the D? The bits that should be the centres, you can't... You obviously can't do them on a stencil. See like in the number 8. And I won't use them with bits missing. So look at the the letter O. I won't use them, so they can go. Um, I've used that one before. It's very thin and flimsy though. So I don't know whether I'll hang on to that. And these, yeah, I probably won't use those. I think someone sent me these, but I probably won't use them. I don't know. Maybe I'll look at them. Right, I need to go through all of this. There's more stuff underneath. Some paper. And there's even more of these. Number stencils. House. 
that one then. These are all five by seven. I might make that for a video. More gothic arches. An ATC with the with holes in, so I know where to place brads. <laughs> More houses. Tags. Oh, that was for a tag book swap that was in. Where the, the pages went that way. And then it looks like there's a box template in there. Right, I need to... Another tag. I don't need tag templates anymore. House templates. I think they were for polymer... I was using those for polymer clay. Yeah, most of that's rubbish. Okay, I'm going to sort it all out. See what's staying, what's going. And then we've just got labelling to do. I'm pretty sure. I keep thinking there must be something else. There must be something else. I know there's the Tim Holtz stamps that aren't indexed, but I'm not going to record that. Um, there's too many of them. So I'm going to get this sorted. I might show you the stamps anyway. Um, I think I said I would. Although I might have just thought that in my head. I don't know. I don't know what I've said anymore, to be perfectly honest. Um, okay, I'll be back soon. Right, I think I'm kind of organised. I've split up the things that were in here and I don't know whether that's a good move or not. But I had an empty drawer. Anyway, this is the one that was under my desk and I've just left all my little templates in here. So all the things that I've cut out of card and things that are folded into ideas and all that kind of stuff plus the mini envelopes template that envelope template um, I've left my Tim Holtz packaging in there as well um, and I left that Island Friends in here because I've, I use that one less um, yeah mini envelope templates and all the things that that I've kind of figured out or and then I've hung on to these for now the gothic arch and the house templates because I might use them right the stuff that's going is here so a couple of this is going to be hard to show. A couple of the metal ones. This is for... I was just trying to figure out what it is. It's for some kind of card with bits that you cut. I don't, I, I don't really know. It's in Dutch, so... <laughs> Who knows? I'm letting this Dreamweaver one go as well, which is the one with the trees. Because although it's really nice... The lines are so, so delicate that your image kind of gets a bit lost. So I'm going to let that one go. These two Paper Mania ones, numbers and alphabet, because they've never been opened. And these ones here as well. I'm going to let those go. The Crafters Workshop alphabet's already said. That's a Heidi Swap mask. I don't know how that got in there, but anyway. Um, and then these WS Design ones from years ago. So all that is going. And then, as I say, I've just got mostly stuff that I've got for, I don't know, ideas for my projects, things I've cut out mostly in there, plus the envelope templates that Again, a years old, but I want them. Then if I spin you around to that drawer. So that is where I've put the stencils. So there's the three folders there. Then down the side I've got my Islet Friend. And there's two other little bits. And then at the front, 
Um, let me tilt the camera down a bit. These are the Dreamweaver stencils. So they're stood up so I can flick through them. And then hopefully I'll use them more because they're right at the front. So, yeah, as I say, I'm not sure. The drawer was empty. It's not being used for anything. But it was all in one drawer and I've made it into two. Which I don't know how I feel about. Which is silly really, isn't it? Because splitting it into two means I can access things more easily. That's the whole point of doing the room, right? I don't know, it just feels wrong when I've tried so hard to empty drawers to fill them up again. <sighs> anyway, I'm going to think on it. Mm, but other than that, I'm going to call this room done. Well, actually, no, there's a couple of things on my desk. I'll just show you what's left. That Oh, those bits of card are just pulled out. So there's a home for them. So that's the little tray, that's fine. My art prompt box, that's fine. Those bottles are not fine. I moved the reinkers, the reinkers were there next to the stays on, and I put them in a box with reinkers. Um yeah, those bottles need to go and then Well actually, ha huh, this one here This can go in here now. Because these are all well, it's a half-made project, but so are those templates, really. These are, um, do you remember these? that The ones with the broken elastic bands on? Let me tilt the camera down so I can actually... There we go. Yeah, I showed these ones, um, I don't know what Sharpo was doing, but anyway, it's an elastic band book with, with elastic bands in that. Oh jeez, do you think I could get the camera work sorted out? Okay. <laughs> elastic band book with broken elastic bands, there you go. That's, that's all you needed to know. <laughs> it's, it kind of falls into the category of all the other things in this box. As in ideas, things to make. Right, so the only other things on here, let me move this. Are these are the only things now without homes apart from those spray bottles and the half finished projects. So this here is another stencil binder which I've got the the punched thingies for by thingies I mean 7 inch vinyl record sleeves that's what they are um, the covers or one cover at least I don't know where the other cover's gone oh yeah the two there. there's two there so that could go in the template drawer as well actually because it is template stuff so, well, let's move it right now. Let's put it in the drawer. Then I've got a half-finished project, which the easiest thing to do with this is finish it, right? Another half-finished project. I don't know whether to just put them in with um, in my portfolio. Pull him out, put him in my portfolio, but will I go to him then and actually finish him? And I do want to finish him. <sighs> but there's no room where my Bristol board is, because this, this is done on Bristol board. There's no room on that shelf, otherwise he could go on that shelf. Unless I move something, okay, we could do that. I don't want to put them in my portfolio, really. Oh, there's testing skin tones for him. Right, okay. I'm going to put him on the shelf. 
where my Bristol board is. This is just what I've been stamping stuff on, so that hardly... That's when I've been indexing stamps, cleaning my stamps, so that's actually rubbish. Um, right, so the things now are... More stuff to go in my swatch, my swatch book. And then there's everything else that's in this pile, apart from those top things, are all my ideas for stuff. There's a clipboard and then more swatch things. So I just need, to, yeah, I just need to sort my swatch booklet out. That little clipboard's handy to put my current ideas on. That might stay on my desk. I used to have it hung somewhere and I can't remember where. I don't know. And, um, anyway, I like that around because it's, it's handy. So, sort this. Then, we're nearly done. Okay, I will be back when this room is 100% completely and utterly finished. I think what I might do, because for the last three days I've been desperate to change my nail polish because it's all chipped off with being doing so much in this room because you really need to know that but you can see it and it looks awful um but i've not done it because i've been indexing stamps so what i really want to do today now because it's it's getting quite late well it's not really late it's it's past tea time let's put it that way um yeah i want to have a bath i want to do my nails so I think I'm just going to clear these bits up and do that and relax tonight and then I'll not post another day's video but I will just label everything up in the morning and give you an overview of how it looks. That's what we'll do. So I will see you, see you in the next clip. Well it is now Saturday morning. I thought I was almost done and I was ready for labelling things up and then I found a box I hadn't been through. I don't know how I missed it but this is a box that's got small alterable items like bottle caps and slide mounts and things like that and I have thrown a couple of things in here as I've been um, moving things about. So the first thing that I know I've thrown in here is this little bag for altering but I now have a separate drawer for those so that can go in there. I did put the um, sea glass in here, this was out of that blue container that is still sat on my floor at the minute but I think I've found a home for it so that's in here then that alterable calendar that I was going to look at um, these coasters alterable coasters that I found on a shelf so these I mean those things can stay in here um, some post-its that I've used when I've made post-it holders so they kind of stay in here there's some, some of these small frames, um, magnetic photo frames that I have altered in the past. Bottle caps, bottle caps, bottle caps, more bottle caps. Yeah, that is possibly a little excessive. Um, I may de-stash some of those. Then... These are the kind of, could be tags or bookmarks. I'm not sure where I got those, whether somebody sent them to me or I've bought them. I don't remember. Um, I've got a, quite a stack of these little slides to alter. Um, a... CD with a clock mechanism attached to it to alter. Is that the same glass or is that a second packet of glass? I'm not sure. Some CDs to alter. Most of these things are going to stay. I don't think I'm really de-stashing anything apart from the bottle tops maybe. Um, some small tins 
to alter. Then there's the, I'm not sure, I don't know, can you still buy this, the range of memory glass? I'm not sure if you can or not, but anyway, there's range of memory gl glass in clear and frosted and more range of memory glass and more range of memory glass then here's some of the frames that go with it and that's laminate chips I don't know where they came from either. That should be maybe with... I don't know, it can stay in here. I was just going to put it in one of the other ultra drawers, but it's only small. Um, more memory frames. Yeah. It is pretty well organised, actually. Oh, what are they? Oh, memory capsules, ideal for memory frames and glass. Don't think I've ever used them, but they're there. There's another tin to alter. So I don't, yeah, I don't think there's much going. I'm going to keep this stuff, especially the glass and frames, because I don't know if you can still get them or not. And I do enjoy making projects with those. That one's going to be a little nuisance because I want to go back in. Right. I could put some tape on that ring, couldn't I? So they're staying. Um, oh, there. Um, more slide slide mailers they are with glass by the looks of it more slide mailers if you haven't seen these they're just things that you're supposed to mail slides in I guess but um I alter them I have I'm sure I've got I've got at least one project using a slide mailer on my channel if you're interested in seeing that then these are beer mats to alter that um, yeah I've obviously oh these are from Michael's actually so somebody must have gifted me these ones and those ones coasters and beer mats they're definitely beer mats because they've got Carlsberg written on them I think I got bought those off eBay but they're quite good for making little books with and these are the pages, obviously, that you cover. And I don't really know what what they're in there for. They can probably go. Watch crystals. I think somebody sent me these. Yeah, I'm going to keep those. Then the microscope slides and matchboxes, and that's about it. So everything's staying, I'll just put it back again. I might, apart from maybe the bottle caps, I might de-stash some of those. But that's it. Anyway, I wanted to show the drawer because if I missed a drawer out, then it was kind of cheating because I'd missed a drawer and hadn't looked through it. And even though I knew it was pretty much staying, just to go through the process of, you know, taking it out, and looking at it and making sure because I think most of the drawers so far when I've thought they're okay they've actually had a couple of things in that could have been de-stashed so that is that it's um, almost done I'm in the process of la putting labels on things again granted most of them are the same labels because most of the stuff is in the same places um, but they're getting nice fresh white labels that aren't peeling off and and then what's left to do oh there's that blue box that I'm I've got an empty drawer so if I could get that the contents of that blue box all the reindeer moss and there's tags and things in their shells 
If I can get that into a drawer, then that is the last thing that is sat on the floor. So that would be the objective achieved because the objective really was to de-stash enough so that I had nothing on the floor. So I will check in with you and give you a final update shortly. Something to share. This is the blue box that has been the bane of my life because it has spent so much time on the floor because there's been nowhere to put it and it's empty. So I've taken everything out that I'd previously sorted. It had shells, feathers, stamp board, um, a few other bits and pieces in there and they are now in the drawer that was spare so this can leave the room. So that's that job done. And the last job to do really, the last drawers that I haven't looked in are the ones with my Tim Holtz stamps. So although I think I'm going to keep them all, I'm going to go through the process. So I will meet you back here when they are on my desk. Well, here they are, the two drawers of Tim Holtz cling stamps. So I'm just going to literally go through them. This was one that was with my unindex stamps. It's a fairly recent purchase. It came with the die so it's just in there well it's in there because it's Tim Holtz right so let's grab some of these and I've got the mostly older stamps I think I've not bought so many from the maybe the last couple of years but most of them are staying yeah, yeah I use I use that tree all the time and I've used that quite often That one I've not used as much. I think this is when I started slowing down on buying them because they didn't appeal to me as much. This one, well, this one hasn't been used. I don't think. No, it hasn't. But it was um, a, it was an eBay find, a cheap price, so I picked it up and I will use it. I've just not had opportunity yet. This one I use a lot. On this one. And this one. I think that was the first one I bought, you know. I think it was. What's it called? Urban Tapestry. Oh, actually, no, it wasn't. Hmm. That was a very early one. There was another one as well that I think maybe I got before that. Um, that one I used, the Halloween ones. See, maybe I should take these out and put them with... I don't know. I was contemplating putting Christmas and Halloween stuff together, but actually these stamps... I don't just use them for Halloween, so maybe they should stay. Right, this side. I use that a lot. And that one, that's a very early one. I think this was the first... Was this the first set that they did the minis? I think it is. And that's... I don't see many people using this. I know, again, it's an older stamp, but um, it's got some nice borders and things on it. Elements for backgrounds. Um, blueprints. I really need to use those. These are ones that don't... They don't get used as much. Oh, that see, this one. I think this is the first one I bought. I think so. I'm not sure. I can't really remember. It was either that one or the other one this one now this one isn't Tim Holtz but it's in here because it's on the cling mount like all the others it's the Stampers Anonymous which I already have that border because I bought I bought a lot of them before Tim Holtz was around when they were wood mounted stamps I bought and I think I had to buy them directly from Stampers Anonymous as well so I could actually de-stash the other one of those couldn't I Mm. But I love that set. It's a really nice set. This side, yeah, love that one. This was another one that was an eBay find, so it's not being used. Um, 
but I will probably use that on Halloween cards this year. The skeleton and the crow. We'll see. And this one. Yeah, this one was the same. Um, haven't used this one quite as much. But I don't know if you can see these very well. This one's been used a lot, especially those numbers. Then I'm going over to the other side. Right, the ones, these ones are on top because they've either not been used yet or they're very little used. So I've only used this one. This is, I think this is the most recent one I've bought. So whenever this was released, was it last year, the year before last? And I only bought one thing from that release I think um, but I do like those and then these ones haven't been used which is why they're at the top so they're blueprints and I was late on the crazy bird train <laughs> so I, I don't have the big ones but I would like the bigger ones um, I only have these little ones And these ones, which I should have used this Easter, but I was busy de-stashing my room. And I picked up the cats as well. Oh, that would be the most recent one I've bought. The cats. So they are recent purchases, but haven't been used yet. The rest are, are all well-loved, well-used, but I mean, a lot of them are really old sets from the first ones that were released the first few years. So I kind of, I know I'm keeping them. I don't think there's, I don't really think there's any way I could order these. I could. Do they stand up? I don't think they might do. They do just about stand up that way. Maybe I'll arrange them like that. Then they're, they're easier to flip through. The problem comes when I've got stamps that have fallen off. The ones that are really well used, they just fall off the back. Oh, that's a um, my one and only Dilusions stamp set. I'm not really a fan of those ones, but I did like the backgrounds. Um, yeah, let's stand them up. still be able to get them in it shouldn't take more space yeah. okay. I might have to take those out of the packets right. you can see there's one <laughs> there's one falling off straight away where did it come from something sticky I'm just kind of I'm only really going through them so people can see them if they want that's a good set I like that one and I'm guessing yeah that came off there it should stay on yeah I think it just wasn't put back on because it's not so old. It's the one, when I come to the one with the little tiny birds on, that always falls off. It really needs um, remounting. These snowflakes, I think I've only used these once. Did I use them on cards? On a video? I might have done. Oh yeah, I did. You can tell when I've used them because they, they've got ink on them still. But I mean, things like that, you, know, you can only use them at Christmas time, so they are going to be used less. This is a very well used set as well. That's a really old one. I don't want to, yeah, I definitely don't want to give up these. I love that set and I love the mini set that goes with it as well. Ultimate Grunge. 
think I've used yeah I've used all of them a lot, especially those two and the bricks as well. Well, I've used all of them a lot. Actually, now this is a set I could give up. I don't use that set. I might leave that one out. Um, I like this set. I forget that bird cage is on there. And that one. These ones. Yeah, just a few Tim Holtz. <laughs> I think when um, when Tim Holtz first released his stamps, it was kind of like yeah, it was like Christmas every every release because I loved all of the stamps. And now I'm I'm not as keen on them the ones that have been released now. I think there's only the ones that have just been released. The I think there's one set. That I'm interested in getting and that's it which is a good thing because it's not like I need more stamps is it that one needs to be used more as well I've only used a couple off this plate one with um, Halloween and Christmas stuff on right I can't get any more in there I don't think and still be able to flick through well, that's not bad actually right let me move these In fact, let me just switch that box around. Now, if I leave all these stacked the same way, they're all going to fall over. So, that's another one that hasn't been used. It seems to be those blueprint ones that I'm not really using. Hmm. This one... I don't know about this. When I bought it, I thought it was an alphabet set that I could use as an alphabet. But you can't cut the you can't cut them apart. You can cut them across the rows, but you can't cut down here because you see how the distressed part goes straight into the next letter. So you can't cut them up. I think what I need to do with that. Do I take it out and put it with backgrounds? I don't know whether that works for Tim Holtz because most Tim Holtz stamps I use for backgrounds. Maybe leave it at the front somewhere. So I will probably rearrange these off camera. That's a good set. Um, so that the ones I'm not really using are at the front. Because it's not that I don't want to use them or I don't like them. I, I love all of them. It's more the fact that there's so many and they get hidden. That's a good set as well. 100th collection. Wow. Um, now these ones... These are another set that I could... I could lose potentially. I don't really want to. I don't know. Let's put them in a maybe pile. And these ones as well. But you, oh, I find it hard to give up Tim Holtz. I need to, I need to find a, a purpose for those. I need to I need to use them. That's a really old set. I don't use that one as often. But I have used it. That one I like. I've done some cards with that image. And that one. And there's that one. Can you even see these? They're the ones I've just gone through. And the last one is the set with the butterflies on. So, wherever those little birds are, they didn't fall off. Hmm. 
there's a possibility of those three. Well, that's really... That's really one, because who would want... Well, I ran out of battery, so apologies for that. What I was saying um, about those last stamp sets, the alphabet sets, I was just going to say that they really count, those two really count as one, because who would want one alphabet set, half an alphabet, no one, I don't think. Anyway, it's all relative, because I've kept them and I've put them back in. <laughs> so, I kind of knew I wasn't going to get rid of Tim Holtz, but... Whilst I was just um, sorting my camera out, did I say battery? It wasn't the battery. If I said battery, it was memory. It doesn't matter anyway, does it? Um, <laughs> I've um, finished sorting. I, I've had these for years and years, and it only just occurred to me now that I could sort them out in number order because they all have numbers on. <laughs> so yeah it's took it's taken a while for the penny to drop there but i've put them all in number order so these are all the stamps i have from the first set to the hundredth set that was the hundredth collection set <clears throat> and i have i have number one so this must have been surely the first one that i bought I, th I think it was. I think I said the other one with a bird on. I don't know, but I think that was the first one. Um, I didn't necessarily get them all in order. Yeah, I think... I think I bought those two together. So that's number one and number five. I don't have the ones in between. Then number eight. Number eight's that background alphabet so I'd be interested to see what the ones are that I don't have from the first release I mustn't have liked them but yeah anyway I don't have all of them there's not 100 stamp sets in there by any stretch uh, just 99 no there isn't <laughs> there's a lot there's a lot missing but you know what I have a lot as well and I don't care whether I have a lot I love them all I use them all apart from those newer ones and I want them all so they all stay um, it's a shame I can't condense them down isn't it but that just means there's space for more <laughs> no, I don't think there'll be very many more that I buy but you never know anyway that is the last job to be done in this room I'm going to take the old labels off which you don't need to really watch me do. Take the old labels off. I've started labelling things up in this room. So I'm going to finish that. And then let you see the finished room. Because it's, it's all done. Apart from these still... Look, this is why I've not indexed them. All of these need indexing. But we're going to forget that little job for now. Because they're organised. And I can do... I don't know. Maybe every time I pick up a set. Index them. But they're the only ones that are still to do. Okay, I will leave you here and come back to show you the finished room. That kind of looks the same, but it's more organised. Alright, bye bye. Well, the room is finally done. So I'm just going to show you around the room and how it looks now. Um, it doesn't actually look that much different. So... A lot of stuff has left, but it kind of looks similar. So this is my desk. And as you can see, my pasta machine is still on the front. Then I have my water container, tray of essentials and my prompt box. And then there is nothing else on here apart from the things that are under the shelves. So my lamp, which I use for filming, is under the shelves, two little containers and then at the front I have my stamp blocks and that is a second lamp there. On the shelves themselves um, I have the containers with pens, fibres, 
um, two of the Tim Holtz pouches with one has Posca pens, the other has more black and white pens and then at the end here I have my paper palettes and also that little clipboard is now there that I've clipped on my project ideas. Above there my inks that I use every day, that little treasure chest that's got little bitty things in, pieces of resin, canvas that I'm going to finish and then there is the metal bucket with rulers and glue and brushes and below there my inks look pretty much the same but I've cleared all the things, there were things um, in front along here along this ledge so they're gone. I recovered and sorted out my paint brushes, there's craft knives at the end so then there's those four containers that I recovered and then some more essential things on there. Um, going back to this area, the unit, although it still has some things, I did have to put those paper mache boxes back, um, it doesn't have as much stuff on there now. The drawers have all been relabeled, my webcam is still hanging on there. So rectangular canvases, square canvas, foam stamps, then small ultra balls, adhesives and there is a second drawer of adhesives and then the canvas bags are down there, you're not going to be able to see I don't think. Yeah, I can't really get down there. Canvas bags and the last drawer is empty. Then let's go back around this way. So we've seen desk area. The units over here, again all relabeled. So that still looks a bit of a mess because the unit's broken but I can't really do anything about that and it is sorted out. My stamp indexes, I've put labels on and organised those even further. So it now has the names of the stamp companies that are in there or some of them are done by theme as well. So these ones are backgrounds, sentiments, alphabets and Christmas. That one is mostly clear stamps but then I put cutesy stamps all together and scenic stamps as well plus all my prima stamps um, which I need together for when I'm doing shows for Prima. Uh, then this is where the Ultra Balls went. So wood Ultra Balls, um, paper mache Ultra Balls, then polymer clay tools, more polymer clay tools, going down further, there's lace and then the uh, Zutter Oh, there's a, this one isn't labelled, this is where, hang on, let me show you this one. That's the contents of the blue box, which I'm not sure what to call it, so I haven't put a label on it yet. But it has the stamp board and tassels and feathers and shells and those um, polystyrene eggs, things like that. And then below there... Um, my Zutter wires and the very last one is encaustic wax supplies, encaustic art supplies. One next to it is the chipboard sheets, the shaped chipboard, grunge board, my alphabet stamps, stencils, um, Colour wash sprays, colour wash sprays, and I was thinking um, what I might do is put um, additional labels on these. So put some labels on here to say which companies, so Lindy's or Ranger or whatever is in that drawer, might do that as well. And then those tools stayed in there, the brayers and things like that, the stencil cutting tool. Over here trimmers, journals that I'm currently working on, 
ATC supplies and then specialist papers, um, pastel papers, um, cut and dry foam, mounting, cling mount fur stamp and a few other bits and pieces then these the same kind of things have stayed in these but I've relabeled them anyway so they've got nice white labels on rather than the peeling yellow ones so game pieces ideology and prima mechanicals metal charms more metal charms um, the resin pieces from prima and recollections uh, foil and leafing supplies pearl trim stickers and rub-ons embossing powders and tags paper bags and coin envelopes across from that this unit has the metal working tools then it has some manila folders and some more metal working tools then acetate and tyvek my oversized stencils there's still a few on top there um, gloss card and at the side there there is um, speedball um, stuff for carving your own stamps then there is stamping up card stamping up card my embossing mats and pricking mats are in the corner there then there is um, 12 by 12 papers, paper stacks and A4 paper stacks and then anything that was in these boxes is now labelled up so I have basil cardstock and I've put the colours on there and patterns paper so there's two boxes of mixed and then those other ones um, are all one manufacturer then at the very top there is my art portfolio, tissue paper and Prima Resist canvas. Go around here. Boxes of artwork, brilliant zincs are still there, some extra supplies and then I just put those altered bottles to the front. I might change those out yet. Then next shelf down this hasn't really changed at all. Prima Colour Bloom Sprays, Wild Orchid Craft Flowers, the other oh, fibres plus the new box that I condensed down. Um, then Glimmer Mist and the collage sheets, although again I did lose quite a lot of those, so that's condensed. This shelf again is pretty much the same, um, all the colouring mediums, pencils and um, pastels and then watercolours. I now have two punches on the shelf, um, that little pink one is just my one inch circle punch that I use for my swatch book so that's why it's sat there. Uh, I put the spare ranger bottles in with the distress stains with the intention of decanting them out into those sprays. So we'll see if I get round to that. Um, sentiment stamp still there. My little Prima star book is currently on display here because that's a newish project. So that's on my channel anyway if uh, you want to take a look at that. I relabeled all the distress inks. I did keep the Adirondack so some of them are there. Some of them are here. Then going down, the Liquitex basic paints are still there but at least I can see them now so I'll be more inclined to use them. I put the um, Indigo Blue, the Paper Artsy, Jophy and Dark Green Door into here. So that was a container that previously had something else in. Um, at the side is my swatch book and the new one that I'm working on and then all the stamps. I haven't relabeled these boxes yet. Um, I don't know, it just seems a bit of a waste of labelling tape to redo all of those but some of them do need doing because I've condensed the boxes down. 
and I think this is something that will continually change because so I might give up some more yet so that's the stamp shelf below there are flowers um, wood pieces cosmic shimmer and H2O's washi tape um, metallic waxes Stuart Gill paints adhesive pearls and rhinestones uh, liquid pearls and stickles um, right at the back there is um, fusible film then the container that has mica and other texturing um, small items bedazzles and things like that um, paints, paints cut and dry foam needs to be at the front because it gets used virtually on every project glitter mica powders alcohol ink reinkers behind there at the the very bottom box there then I have gold and heavy body paints with those um, Reeves ones that I want to use up the three remaining Viva products which probably won't last that long golden fluid acrylics um, another acrylic that needs using up and over here the mere paints and brads and eyelets shelf below that is a paper trimmer that rests against the shelf at the end there um, 8x8, 6x6 papers all of my background stamps and behind there are the Cosmic Shimmer glitter pastes because I still haven't found a place that's ideal for them but that is one of the only things in the room that I'm not happy with where it is then I have these are mostly cutesy stamps so saturated canary, lily of the valley, things like that and there's some clear ones behind them because I like to keep them out of the light um, that is Swarovski crystals then my bind it all paper artsy and silks paints um, dilutions paints on top that is the little bag that has the sequin waste that I saved container, bottom container, unfinished project next container embellishments then clay and the rest of that in the corner is all clay so move you around without making you sick hopefully um, the door area is an area that you didn't see it just has lace hanging on it and oh there's some little um, eggs on there as well that I had a, on a little tree for decorating for Easter uh, I could do with going through the lace actually that's one of the only things that hasn't been done I kind of neglected that but yeah that's all lace and then there's just a Derwent um, travel case on there my tripod I put a few things back on the cork board because it just looks so bare so yeah I put a few things back on there then there's the area with my mediums so all the gel mediums and texture pastes and things like that next to those is the wire rack there's still there's quite a lot of wires around there but that can't really be helped so it's neat and tidy and then that brings us back to my desk area underneath are the Tim Holtz stamps, clear stamps and those little wooden containers um, there is a box on there that's got journals in that haven't been worked in yet so there's the desk view and let's see I'm trying to give you some different views from what you've seen previously so you can have a little bit more perspective and just to come round from where the door is so I'm stood in the far corner of the door so 
you can see from there and the completely clear floor that was the main objective of this exercise um, clear the floor and de-stash enough stuff that the floor could be cleared and just a general kind of make sure everything I own is actually getting used so if you followed the whole series thank you very much I hope it has inspired you to have a go at your own space if you need to um, and there was something else I was going to say oh yeah if you have watched the whole series and there is anything at all that you'd be interested in seeing being used in a project leave me a comment and let me know um, that would be quite a good challenge for me to use some things that um, perhaps you've not seen on my channel before okay I will leave you with that view of my desk and the other room the other room I talked about that's probably a job for maybe the summer I might start it before then I will film it but I'm not going to put any more videos up like this um, right now I'd like to put some art videos up instead so okay um, thanks for watching and I will see you soon